Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture 21 with a very simple message that objective of life is to light the inner fire lying dormant in the recess of our mind. And before really starting this lecture, we need to relook at what really we learned in the last lecture. In other words, let us recapitulate. If you look at, I started with uh, taking an example where I illustrated how to really determine the activation energy from experiment provided both are conducted at two different temperatures and that was a part of the, an example. Then we moved into the what you call molecular of the reaction based on that we divided you know roughly all the reaction into three unimolecular, bimolecular and trimolecular. Of course, quadrum molecular reaction can take place, but very unlikely to happen. And then we also define a term known as order of reaction and based on that we just you know touch upon the first order reaction, second order reaction and third order reaction. Some of the examples I have taken, but however, if you want to really look at uh, in detail you need to look at the equations and solve it. So, that you will see how this reaction rate is varying with time. Uh, I did not get into that, if some of you are interested, you can look at some standard books and combustion and you can have a feel of what it is. Later on, we moved into chain reactions, which is natural in case of uh, particularly whenever the combustion reaction is taking place, right? Like chain initiation, chain uh, what you call branching, chain carrying reaction, chain termination. If you remember, I consider this chain reaction is nothing but a human life, like a baby is taken birth that is initiated, life is initiated and it will be branching, carrying out like learning and other things at the end you know you will be terminated at the death. So, then we moved into the kinetics, the multi step chemistry you know I just show you a very glimpses of it just to have a feel how complex it is not you remember all those steps involved in the multi step kinetics, but we will be mostly handling with the global kinetics, which is although not occurring in nature, it is just a model to overcome the problem of handling multi step chemistry in realistic problem. And then we uh, moved into what you call various modes of combustion right, like flame and flameless mode and under the flameless mode I talked about smoldering combustion to just to give you into you know little bit uh, idea about it. And then we have also talked about premix flame and diffuse flame. And as I told that combustion is basically a wave right, whether it is a wave or not that we will look at today. It is like your shock wave, it is like a wave. If I consider a tube which is mixed with pre you know fuel and air. For example, if I take a, a tube here and this is fuel plus air which are mixed together right. If I ignite you know you know this, these are the mixtures you know what you call all mixed together of course, at a what you call particular fuel air ratio in which combustion can take place, because we know that there is a two limit you know between which combustion can take place, beyond this two limit it cannot be. Do you know that what is that limit? That is known as flammability limit, we will be talking about it just briefly. And then that is the fuel air mixture beyond which no combustion will take place, however, the ignition energy we need to take. If you look at to ignite something right we need to uh, to have a flame to have combustion we need to ignite it right 
without ignition can really combustion take place? Certainly no, right? Initiation is required, right? So, naturally we will ignite, if you look at this is igniter, then what will happen? Of course, this is a spark I am taking about, but with the spark you can say this is a spark plug kind of things, you know. Spark plug is one kind of igniter, there are several kinds of igniters. As we go along we will talk about it, particularly in solid propellant combustion, you know, various kinds of igniter you can think of, right. So, if I ignite it what will happen? Here what will be there in this place? There would not be any fuel air mixture, will it be there? There might be, but those are you know diffusion will be taking place, right and it will mix in with air may be below the flammability limit, nothing will happen if I ignite it. So, if you look at the flame will be kernel will be coming over here, but it will be moving towards this direction right these are flame will be moving. Will it be moving or will it remain stationary? Why it will move? Because there is a fuel air mixture and which is there on this side, whereas this side it is simply air right. If this is my tube, okay, this is my tube right. So, this is a simply air which is open to atmosphere am I right, but why it will move at all what makes it to move because fuel air, air is there is it the reason then how does it really takes place right because what will be happening like once the you know flame is formed a flame kernel is being formed then some heat will be transferred right if it is some heat chemical reaction is taking place right some heat being released is not it some heat being released yes or not it heat being released then it has to go both the side it can go this side it can go this the other side as well am I right that depends upon what is the mode of heat transfer what kind of mode of heat transfer you one can think of one is conduction, other will be radiation, what else other will be? Convection right, but is it convection will take place in this? Because keep in mind in the tube the mixtures are stationary, it is not like a pipe which is moving, we are just keeping mixtures stationary right. Will it be convection will be there? Why not? What about natural convection? There would not be any force convection, but natural convection will be there, yes or no? because if something is hard that gas will go up because of gravity right yes or no i think you people are not getting natural convection will be there radiation will be there because it is very high temperature you know that radiation it transfer is proportional to the power of uh, temperature power to the four right so naturally it will be there because temperature is quite high but in the low temperature I cannot really consider, I need not to consider the radiation effect, because temperature effect is not very low you know right, but at the high temperature I cannot manage to neglect it, is that clear. So, heat will be transferred, if it will transfer what will happen to the mixture here, its temperature will go up, if it will go up, go up means this temperature, if I put a temperature here, this will be going up you know temperature of this point will be going up, yes or no, because heat is being transferred and then what will happen? Transfer then the mixture's temperature will be going up till when it is beyond the ignition temperature, self ignition temperature then combustion will take place right, then it will be going. So, it will be going at what you call go on moving like a wave in the direction till it all the gases being consumed right. If you look at you know this example I always give like suppose this is a food item let us say there is an insect you know it will go on eating because of course as long as he is hungry. So, similarly in our scripture people say that fire is having a hunger to consume the fuel area right. So, similarly it is go on 
going moving that wherever food is there right. If you look at you know like earlier days horses are being put like if they want to make the horse to move. So, they will give you the what you call food to lure you by food like you people are being lured for getting a job to study something right. Otherwise, who will study Baba? Why you will attend class right because you want to get a job that is why you want to work hard and then do that right. It is like that fire or the flame will be trying to go towards the fuel and air that is a natural way right. So, therefore, we will be moving right. So, if I look at this process what is this process? Can you give me another similitude which will help you to think better about a flame movement? This is nothing but a wave it will be moving it will be moving this flame front these are flame front right these are flame front which will be moving right ok. So, now let us look at just that whatever I have told let us look at visually what really we will be looking at I have taken a tube in this case and there is a tube here glass tube where we can you know see visualize the flame there is ignite this is a fuel air mixtures this is ignition. Then what is happening this flame kernel is being formed it is moving towards that it is goes on moving, but as it goes if you look at in the beginning it was like a curved little bit and then this is also flattened like you know is a half kind of a moon crescent shape kind of thing, but in a certain angle right why it is so why it is not moving as a front as a you know like a uh, little bit curve may be because of heat losses will be there right. And why it is not moving as a, a one dimensional camera now it is almost two dimensional why it is so why it is you know in this region particularly in this region it is what you call curved and then it is you know slanted kind of thing why it is so. I have already given you answer for this because of what natural convection right. So, but however, if I want to make this flame stationary what I will have to do the flame front is moving right. It is like you know you know fire open fire fire goes on moving you know you have seen it is devastating right. But as an engineer we do not want the flame to move we should control the flame right such that we can utilize it that is the whole gamut of you know combustors or the gas turbine combustors or the rocket engines we need to contain the flame inside the combustor right. For that we need to talk about flame stabilization and other things right. So, if you look at like I want to look at that. So, what you do basically in this case what you can I ask you a give a similitude what is really happening right. In this if you look at this example if you are not thinking about we will come to that little later on ok. Let us now look at how we can make it stationary it is a very simple question right what you will have to do I will have to feed this fuel layer mixture with certain velocity with which this flame front will be moving like in this case flame print is moving with respect to you know unburned mixture or the burnt mixture you know with certain particular velocity right. And that will be dependent on what like I call it S L, S L is the laminar burning velocity S L and it is defined with respect to unburned mixture in this case that means these are unburned mixtures right this is a flame will be moving toward this with respect to this unburned mixtures right then I call it as a burning velocity. Now, if I will allow if I make the flow right fuel layer mixture to be flow towards or into the flame like in the opposite direction of flame flame is moving in this direction and fuel air is coming this direction if it will be same as that then my flame front will be stationary. Otherwise, it will be moving either to the left or to the right depending upon whether the fuel air mixture is less than the burning velocity or fuel air mixture is greater than the burning velocity. 
this is the basic principle of flame stabilization very important point okay are you getting my point so now if i'll make this it will be stationary and if it is stationary it will be very easy for me to what you call look at this one right uh, look at uh, you know um, kind of a look at and then analyze it we'll do that like the speed of uh, combustion wave as i told you will be varying between 20 to 340 centimeter per second keep in mind that if it is a deflagration right that means what is the meaning of deflagration the burning velocity or the flame front will be moving at a subsonic speed right that we call it as a deflagration right <coughs> and it will be dependent on what it will be dependent on inlet temperature then what else fuel air mixtures type of fuel air like if it is methane air it will be different if it is methane oxygen it will be dependent it will be if it is hydrogen oxygen it will be different if it is hydrogen air it will be different or any other combination it will be different whether it is a you know like a lean mixture it will be different velocity pressure also it will be dependent on that so we will be look all those things out that means it will be type of fuel air mixtures and other inlet conditions what it would be and as i told you that when this flame front will be moving at a you know uh, subsonic speed we call it as a deflagration right and i can consider this as you know as a uh, one what you call station 1 station 2 but if this burning velocity or what you call flame front is moving at a uh, more than the speed of sound we call it as a detonation detonation is basically a explosion kind of thing because it is moving at a very high speed you might have heard you know in your uh, what you call diwali or the festivals you know people make fire cracker right or even like your terrorists they put some explosion you know like that is a detonation it's not a deflagration right and which is always must be avoided unless otherwise it is useful for the mankind but unfortunately all explosions and other thing is misuse abuse for the you know peril or the for the people you know uh, against the people right so now let us look at how we can analyze this one dimensional combustion wave right because as i told you it is basically a wave right and what we will do we will be using the same continuity and uh, you know all those equation but what we will be looking at is like i am having a uh, what do you call a tube kind of thing there is a wave here you know it is the flame front and I can say this is a 1 and this is 2. Keep in mind that this flow is coming over in such a way it is moving in, in directions and it is stationary right and it is also products are going out I can there is station 1 and station 2 it can be deflagration it can be detonation right we are not distinguishing at this moment we will be uh, looking trying to find out what to call <coughs> the relationship for this and what are the assumption will make will make the steady in which it flow right and uh, it is basically one dimensional flow right and it is uh, what you call all compressible in nature flow is compressible because it can take care of both detonation and deflagration and other assumptions whatever we have done for our earlier studies will be holding good so uh, if i look at this one dimensional so then continuity equation will be like rho 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 v 2 that we have done several time from the your uh, mass conservation equation right is equal to total mass flux which is passing through because this is a constant area duct ok. So, the momentum equation will be p 1 plus half uh, sorry uh, p 1 plus rho 1 v 1 square is equal to p 2 plus rho 2 v 2 square because it is a compressible flow right. Uh, if it could have an incompressible then you could have used the Bernoulli's equation right that is 
where p 1 plus half rho v 1 square is constant, you know. But energy equation then here C p 1 t 1 plus v 1 square divided by 2 plus q, q is the heat being added, right. It can be due to combustion, it can be due to some heat additions, you know, like anything can happen and C p 2 t 2 plus v 2 square by 2 this equation kind of equation we have derived at least you know 3 4 times. So, we need I am just writing here. So, equation of state if you look at what will have to for the station 1 it is p 1 is equal to rho 1 r t 1 and for uh, uh, station 2 it is p 2 r 2 uh, sorry rho 2 r t 2 right. So, keep in mind that this q is the heat release per unit mass and uh, this is basically a summation over this x i h i f and y i is the mass fraction of i s species. And you know if you look at the h i f is the heat of formation of i s species right. And combining this continuity equation and momentum equations, we can get a expression rho 1 v 1 square is equal to p 2 minus p 1 divided by 1 over rho 1 minus 1 over rho 2. Of course, that is equal to the m dot square that is the mass flux or you know mass flow rate you know which is going through it. It is basically mass flux keep in mind because area is divided. So, it is a mass flux. Now, if I want to express this in terms of Mach number right, I can do that using the your what you call definition of speed of sound right we know it is root over gamma p by rho right or root over gamma r t. So, if you do that what you will get is basically m 1 square is equal to 1 over gamma in the bracket p, p 1 minus p 2 uh, p 1 by p 2 minus 1 divided by 1 over rho 1 by rho 2. And this relationship what you call this relationship is known as Rayleigh relationship. If you look at it is similar to the Rayleigh flow, am I right? Because all these equations are nothing but your Rayleigh flow, which we have already considered, but we are looking at little from the different angle, right? Combining equation with the energy equation, like uh, this equation, what you call with the energy, we can get an expression Q is equal to gamma divided by gamma minus 1 p 2 by rho 2 minus p 1 by rho 1 minus half and then p 2 minus p 1 in the bracket of course, into in the bracket 1 over rho 1 plus 2 by rho 2 right. I think it will be 1 I guess. So, what if you look at this is a very important relationship which is known as Rankine Huguenot relationship. And if this heat you know uh, addition will be 0 what you will get? You will get basically a shock wave relationship right. That means, if this q will be 0. So, then from this you get a relationship for a shock wave which we have already derived. Because if I in the energy equation if q is 0 you can get that right. So, and let us look at for a what you call this expression what we will do? We will be looking at and for a particular pressure inlet pressure p 1 and density rho 1 and for a particular heat addition like you know kind of things. If we will plot this by varying the density you know p 2, then we will get a curve which is known as Huguenot curve. That Huguenot curve is basically p 2 is being plotted 1 over rho 2 right. And for a fixed value of q and inlet pressure and inlet density. The curve will be looking like that. So, if you look at this curve will be looking in this way. Now, what is this origin? If you look at this is basically p 1 1 over rho 1. If I draw a parallel line to this uh, what you call 1 over rho 2 axis right. This is the 1 over rho 2 and this is p 2 axis right and it will cross at a point here right. 
And similarly, if I draw a parallel line through this origin O to this P 2 axis, it will cross a point right. And then if I take a tangent, a draw a line which is tangent to this curve, you will get a point x. Similarly, if you draw a tangent to this line, you will get a point y. Right? You might be wondering why I am doing this, what is the requirement? Because we want to look at various regions, what really happening. For example, a point from and this point a x is known as upper chap jugunet point, C j point, upper chap jugunet point. And any, re, any region above this point, you know, is known as the region 1. The region 1, what is really it is? If you look at, if I take a point here, what I will get? Basically, it is a P 2, which is much higher than the P 1, because my P 1 is here. Yes or no? It is much higher. And if you look at, it is moving almost parallel or kind of thing. That means, it is infinite, right. These values are infinite. And this pressure P 2 is greater than the P u. What is that P u? P u is the Chap Chapman Juggenet, you know, pressure. That is P u here. It is greater than that. If it is greater than that, then it leads to what? It leads to detonation and strong detonation, right. What is the meaning of that? Meaning is that, if my downstream pressure is very high, what will happen? It will be trying to move this wave, you know, at a very higher rate. As a result, the Mach number will be moving towards infinity, right. The gas velocity relative to the wave front, of course, is slowed down to the subsonic speed. What is that? M 2, M 2 will be very, because if my M 1 is very, very high, right, what happens at the back of a normal sock? Always one, or the, I mean just opposite. If it is m 1 is very high, m 2 will be very, very low. So, the similar thing is happening in this case, right. And as I told you, pressure and density like increases significantly as a result, p 2 is tending towards infinity. It is going a very high value, little bit changes, you know. And m 1 will be infinity and which is rarely observed and that is known as strong detonation, which is would not be occurring. It is only you know, in nature it cannot really occur, because strong things you know, very, very strong things is a mathematically it is possible, but in reality it is not that, right. For example, like if there is a you know, a lot of shock, what happens? Then a person if, you know, like if you are too much of stress, you will extinct. The nature always wants that you should be here, you may get a little bit stress, so that you will perform well, right. Okay. So, similarly, the nature always is benign to the people, to the all the spaces around and so also the detonation. So, strong detonation generally would not be occurring at all, right. But however, if the pressure you know which is lower than that, this is the region 2, where this burnt pressure you know pressure of the burnt gas will be less than the P c, right. Keep in mind that this P 2 in this region, you know region 2 will be greater than the P 1. P 1 means here, okay. but however, it is less than the P u, P u is the Chapman Juggernaut wave. In this region, is a weak detonation wave will be formed, because if you look at it is a slope is smaller as compared to this region, you know, region 1. So, the m 2 will be supersonic, sorry um, m 1 will be supersonic, but it would not be very, very high, right, as compared to the region 1. So, gas of course, the other uh, if you look at other way around, 
that is m 2 gas velocity related to wave front is slowed to subsonic speed right that is similar thing happened, but it would not be that subsonic okay, as compared to region 1. So, burnt gas velocity that is your m 1 will be greater than the speed of sound that is why it is detonation and weak detonation is likely to occur in a nature in the form of explosion what we see or what we always encounter and we are encountering explosion nowadays because of terrorist activities okay, and other places. So, which is you know not good as a result you know like because they are abusing the technology. So, at isochoric condition you know this is very important where one density you know at this point this is the point 1 over rho 2 is approximately equal to the rho 1 right. Then what happens? That means, it is a very weak detonation and infinite velocity will be occurring and which is quite physically unattainable right this point. But if you come to this region right see this point actually you know where if you look at it is almost 1 over rho 1 if you look at this vertical line right vertical line where 1 over rho 1 or rho 1 is equal to rho 2. That means, if I look at your equation I will come to that that you will say it will be become 0. Now, let me uh, you remember that equation we got from the momentum equation rho 1 v 1 square is equal to p 1 minus p 2 divided by 1 over rho 1 minus 1 over rho 2 right. So, then if it is rho 1 is 0 the denominator is going towards very small value at 0 then it will be infinity you know that is not possible. So, therefore, this region from onwards is not possible physically let us look at why it is not possible in the region 3 p 2 is greater than p 1 and 1 over rho 2 is greater than 1 over rho 1 right yes or no because in this region any region any point here in the region 3 1 over rho 2 is greater than 1 over rho 1 and p 2 is greater than p 1 because p 2 is here and it is p 1 is here p p 2 will be any point right till of course this point where p 2 is equal to p 1 right so therefore it is not possible why you look at this expression because i am saying p 2 is greater than p 1 that means this is a positive quantity right whereas what happened to this this is negative quantity in the numerator this will be this will be a negative quantity am I right because 1 over rho 2 is greater than 1 over rho 1. So, there will negative and this is a positive quantity. So, if I take a v 1 what it will be it will be an imaginary mathematically also it you know like of course, one can think of, but in reality it is not. So, therefore, this region is impossible to get that. And I, I have already told you this is physically impossible this region. So, let us look at the region now I v like this is a weak deflagration which will be occurring in this region what is happening p 2 in this region p 2 is you know very very less than the p 1 that means is closer to p 2 is closer to p 1 right. Because this is your what point p 1 and when you are saying this is not changing much because the slope is very very small am I right this is a flattening out. So, and whereas the rho 2 1 over rho 2 is greater than 1 over rho 1 because it is your this point is your 1 over rho 1 and this point is is much higher. So, as a result what will happen gas velocity with respect to wave increases from low subsonic to high subsonic right, but then what will happen the pressure ratio you know or pressure change across this combustion wave will be very very small right. And this is known as weak deflagration, but however, in the case of the region 5 you know it is a strong deflagration and p 2 will be I mean little uh, what you call or rather p 2 is less than p 1, but however, the in this region the weak deflagration region p 2 is very closer to p 1 as compared to the strong deflagration. And 1 over rho 2 is 
far greater than the 1 over rho 1 and gas velocity with respect to the wave increases from low subsonic to the supersonic. Is it possible? Because the area docked is constant. If it is constant, then you cannot heat, add heat to a extent that it will go from subsonic to supersonic. We have seen in the Rayleigh flow, thermal choking will be occurring. So, therefore, it is not possible. right? So, there is a strong deflagration is generally not possible in reality. So, what will be happening? That means, weak deflagration is possible that is the blue line and weak detonation is possible that is the your red line from this region. Now, let us look at qualitatively what is the difference between the detonation and deflagration. So, m 1 if you look at the Mach number for the detonation 5 to 10, whereas deflagration is very, very small. You may be thinking why it is small. Keep in mind that this Mach number is with respect to the burnt gas. So, that you know your speed of sound if you consider it will vary high even if velocity and V 2 by V 1 is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 right. And whereas, this is a deceleration kind of flow in detonation it occurs that is why the impact will be more you know kind of things and whereas, the deflagration it will be 4 to 6. Keep in mind that the P 2 by P 1 is 13 to 66, because this is a compression, it will be compressing right. That is why it is effect is very, very high you know in impact. Whereas, the deflagration it will be 0 0.98 and little slight expansion will be taking place across the deflagration wave right. And T 2 by T 1 of course, the heat addition and in the case of deflagration heat addition will be there and uh, of course, you can add more heat in the detonation right. Therefore, nowadays people are talking about pulse detonation engine you know like. So, that you can manage of course, one of the biggest problem with pulse detonation is the noise you know one has to worry about. And I guess uh, people will overcome that and it will be future power plant for the aircraft as well I guess. So, rho 2 by rho 1 is 1 1.7 to 2.6 whereas, for deflagration the density variation you know is just other way around 0 0.06 to 0 0.25. So, if you look at these are the uh, qualitative you know difference between the detonation and deflagration. So, now let us uh, get into basically a pre mixed flame, because this wave we need not to worry about you know like whether it the flame is there or not we are not worried about what is the structure of flame how it is affecting, what is the burning velocity, here we are looking at whether what is the characteristic of deflagration and detonation right, we, without bothering into the inside what is happening right. So, now we will be getting into the uh, laminar pre mixed flame, if you look at the first laminar first rather first pre mixed flame was invented by Robert Bunsen in 1855 right and it is a man made flame. There is no pre mixed flame in the nature except of course, in a, in a diffusion flame there might be small region which is pre mixed flame right, very very small region and that too nature does not support pre mixed flame as a matter of fact, but however, there might be small region right. So, if you look at how, how he achieved that this Bunsen you know you might be knowing like how he achieved it, because you have used that burner that is known as Bunsen burner right, yes or no. Now, typical Bunsen burner shows over here fuel comes over here and there is a hole in this primary air port and there is a tube this is known as mixing tube and you will get a flame there is a dark zone and luminous zone. Now, how really this air entering into this fuel and why it is entering, how it is being mixed right. These are the questions which might have bothered you when you people are using Bunsen flame in your laboratory particularly plus to label right. Can anybody tell me what is really happening right, because we know that fuel will enter. When fuel is entering you need to supply the fuel at a higher pressure than that of the ambient 
higher the pressure better it will be right. Then what will happen? The fuel orifice will be ejecting the fuel jet as a jet for example, there will be a jet. So, it will be like this you know something. When jet is coming right a jet what is happening? It will be trying to entrain the air you know yes or no. Because if I put a jet here in a simple air what happens? It takes the ambient air into it. It is like your leader you know leader is having a large amount of energy. It takes the other people who is having low energy level right. That is why today we do not have a leader in this country, because people are do not have a real energy. They may so to have certain energy, but that is not genuine energy right. So, their momentum is very very low. So, people are not going or so similarly in this case the jet plays a very important role right. If there is a dirt in the your orifice you see that it is not working right. And if it is mixed then entrainment will be there. So, holes in the mixing as I told this air will be entering here and in this place there will be mixing will be there and as it mixed together like you will get a thorough mixtures over here and you will get a flame right. Suppose, sometimes I close this control ring right what will happen can I get a flame or not certainly yes why not I can get a flame which will be sooty in nature and yellow in color and that is a diffusion flame. If I open this control ring or the air will be entering and it will be premixed and I will get a blue flame provided it is mixed properly right. Generally this Bunsen burner is being designed for stoichiometric mixtures. So, if you look at the you I will get a flame you know there is a luminous zone there is a dark zone and I may get another flame where there is a two zones you know like oxidizing zone reduction zone all those things you might be knowing. So, if you look at the flame shape will be dependent on what because various shapes you may get right it will be dependent on what it will be dependent on the inlet profile what you can have it will be dependent on how much heat loss is there it will be dependent on of course, what is the fuel air mixture you are having right. So, if you look at that way it will be dependent on heat loss to the burner rim it will depend on velocity profile question arises how to get a parabolic velocity profile in a tube. Is it possible to get that if it is so how will get it is it desirable to have a parabolic profile to have a stable burner or stable flame front why not we will use just like that. And if you look at whether the Bunsen burner can give us that by provide that means is very simple you should have a fully developed flow and that fully developed flow can be achieved provided you will give sufficient length which is required for the flow to be fully developed. What do you mean by fully developed flow where the boundary layer in a tube from the surfaces will be merged so that it will not change with the length after getting merged at certain length that is a <coughs> so how to maintain a stationary flame because we always want to have a stationary flame right how to maintain that because you have seen that flame is fluctuating but and whenever the flow air or the fuel air mixture will be fluctuating then naturally it will be fluctuate or there is a external disturbances. For example, some air is blowing or you put the fan on then my flame will be extinguished or it will be vacillating if it is away from the flame or if the door is opened or something you know you may get a oscillating flame or a vacillating you know it will be dwindling here and there right. So, <coughs> Therefore, it is very important to you know have a flame where to maintain the fuel air rate as a, you know a constant fuel air rate fuel flow rate in case of Bunsen flame and in case of premix flame not only the fuel, but also the fuel air mixture must be you know kept constant to have a constant or a stationary flame right and the burner is designed to have a stationary flame. There might be a propagating flame as I showed you 
in the beginning of this lecture, right? If it is the TU you feel and then you ignite the flame will be moving. So, now let us look at a typical LPG air flame photograph I have taken. If you look at this zone, I can call it as a flame, you know, is a luminous flame, right? Right. What about this region? It looks to be having some color. This is a you know premix flame. You can consider this basically little uh, what you call uh, maybe around stoichiometric, but on the lean side stoichiometric. Okay, that means phi is equal to maybe 0 0.9 kind of things, right? And <coughs> if you look at what are the zones, this is a luminous zone, a luminous flame, right? I can call it as a zone, right? flame zone, right, but there is a dark zone as well, am I right. In the last uh, slide I showed you dark zone, but why this dark zone will be there? Can I see that dark zone? How I will see it? It is a very simple way of doing and what really happens in the dark zone? Is it some reaction takes place? Where does this reaction take place? As I told you earlier, flame is a very thin, you know the combustion all combustion occurs in a very thin region what I call it as a flame right. That means, it is a like a surface one can say flame is like a surface. Of course, it is not a surface like, but if you look at a cloth you know it is like a flame surface very thin right. That means, all the reaction will be occurring in this thin region am I right or no. I may be wrong we will see that as you go along and below that what will happening there is no light, how the why this light comes, so that I can see it, is it so? There are some flames which you cannot see, like as I told you, right. What makes the flame to be visible, right. So, if you look at the portion of flame in which temperature is high and has several radicals to emit radiation, right, because of radiation we could see and which is in visible region, right. But if it is outside that we cannot see, but however, it will be radiating, right. So, the flame radiation occurs roughly 300 to 600 nanometers, right. Okay. And if, of course, if somebody can say okay, it is not 300, it is 295, that is okay, this is some rough number I have given. Okay. <coughs> that means, what is saying? It is something ultra violet to the you know visible or the infrared some regime will be there in the flame as well. Okay. Particularly OH radicals you know it comes around 310 kind of thing nanometers which is like a ultraviolet kind of thing. So, where the chemical reactions take place that is a question which I ask it is basically below this luminous zone or right below this luminous and below this luminous zone what it will be? and above the luminous zone what will be happening, because the reaction is taking place just below the luminous zone and what happens above the luminous zone that means, there would not be any reaction. The burnt gases are cooled and diluted by ambient air, because some entrainment will be there. Why there will be entrainment? There is no momentum you know, momentum is being lost, but why it will be? Because of buoyancy right, hot gases will be going out, when it will go it will be taking some amount of air and it will be cooling that is a natural you know. What is the dark zone? As I told you region where unburned gases are heated to a critical temperature, so that it can attain the self ignition temperature to take place right. And not only that here also pyrolysis of the you know fuel takes place. Pyrolysis means you know like where it will be decomposed. Of course, not in the true sense of pyrolysis, but decomposition of the hydrocarbons will be taking place it is a lower temperature, right. So, <coughs> and how well identify a dark zone? You can conduct a very simple experiment. You take a postcard, postcard you know earlier days people used write in a postcard hard paper and slice over a what you call a flame. See that what you will get? You will see that a flame you know if I take a postcard 
and it is my flame here, I am putting my postcard you know in this region, this is my postcard. So, if I will take this out what I will get in this region, I will be getting this region is being burnt out black one I will get, whereas this region center will be intact. That means, this says that flame is occurring at a what you call in a ring form as a shift right and in the inside the nothing no this thing and it will be dark in nature. Of course, if I take a some kind of image I will see it is not emitting any light, because at a lower temperature right. If it is high temperature it could have burnt it out, paper is, you can burn it easily. Okay. So, now the zone uh, which is the zone of the highest temperature flame that is a luminous zone and which factor dictates the color of luminous zone, the radicals right the and which will be dictating is basically fuel ratio and depending on fuel ratio you will get uh, you know radicals being formed and in the lean case flame you will get a blue color right and that is due to uh, what you call O H radicals right. And what will happen with decrease in air mass flow rate, you will get a green flame sometimes you get right and that is due to the excitation of C 2 star molecules. Star is basically chemiluminance right molecules which is radicals and then uh, if you keep in mind there will be soot formation which will give the yellow flames you might have seen that is due to the carbon particles and yellow. So, with this I will stop over. <coughs>